In the given question, it is said that the ideal gas goes through four different cyclic processes and the corresponding pressure versus volume graphs are plotted as shown. We are supposed to choose the right option concerning the change in the internal energy of the gas for all these cyclic processes. Well, it's quite simple. If you recall, you will realize that the internal energy is a state function. It depends on absolute temperature of the ideal gas. And for any cyclic process, the initial and the final thermodynamic states are the same. And so is the temperature. So, if the temperature doesn't change, why should the internal energy change? The change in the internal energy for any cyclic process for an ideal gas will be zero. So, the correct option for this question is D. It is zero in all the four cases. The next question is based on the concept of work done in a thermodynamic process. Here, an ideal gas is taken through a cyclic process and the corresponding volume versus temperature graph is plotted and given to you. You are supposed to find the work done in process AB, BC and CA respectively. Well, let's look at the graph once again. It is volume versus temperature. Let's see if we can identify the different processes involved in this cyclic process. If you notice carefully, you will see that in the process AB, volume remains constant. So it is an isochoric process. What about process BC? The temperature remains same. So it's an isothermal process. And in process CA, volume is proportional to temperature. And that is possible when only the pressure is kept a constant. How? Well, look at the ideal gas equation. PV is equal to nRT. V is proportional to T only when pressure is constant. Now that we have figured out which are these processes, let's look at calculation of work done in each. First one, AB. It's an isochoric process. The volume does not change. And in such a case, the work done by the gas will be zero. What about the second one, isothermal process? The expression for work done in an isothermal process will be N R T naught into natural logarithm of final volume by initial volume. What is N? The number of moles of the ideal gas. And T naught is the absolute temperature of the gas. The temperature which is kept constant. In this case, the number of moles is given to us and is 1. So, this will become R into, what's that constant temperature? It is T2. So, T2 into natural logarithm of, the final volume is V2 and the initial volume is V1. So, that makes it natural logarithm of V2 by V1. Now that we know the work done in the case of process BC, let's look at the last one. The process CA which is isobaric process. The expression for work done in an isobaric process will be N R into the temperature difference. Final temperature minus initial temperature. So I will write it as T F minus T I. Number of moles given is 1. So it will be R into the final temperature here is T1 and the initial temperature is T2 for this process. So this will make it T1 minus T2. Now that we know the work done in each of these processes with R deductions, let's see which option matches. You will see that it is option D. The next question we have is on work done by a gas in a cyclic process. Let me help you in interpreting the data. 6 moles of an ideal gas undergoes a cyclic process and the corresponding pressure versus temperature graph is given to you. You are also given the temperature of the gas at the end of each step. In state A, the temperature is given to be 600 Kelvin. In state B, 800 Kelvin. In state C, 2200 Kelvin. And in state D, 1200 Kelvin. You are supposed to find the net work done 
per cycle. Well, in order to do that, look at the graph once again. There are four parts or four processes involved in this cyclic process. A, B, B, C, C, D and D, A. If we somehow find the work done in each of these processes and sum them up, that's our final answer. So, W net, the net work done will be the sum of work done in process A, B, work done in process B, C, work done in process C, D and work done in process D, A. Now, let's identify each process here. Look at the process A, B. It corresponds to a straight line. If on the graph of pressure versus temperature, a process is represented by a straight line, it only means that volume remains same or it's an isochoric process. How do you know? Simple. Take the ideal gas equation. PV is equal to nRT. P is proportional to T or it will be a straight line only when V or the volume remains a constant. So, process AB and process CD are isochoric processes. And in an isochoric process, the net work done will be zero. So, this term and this term will go away. We are left with the calculation of WBC and WDA, the work done in process BC and the process DA now. Look at the process BC. It is a horizontal line. It means that the pressure will remain a constant or it is an isobaric process. And we know the expression for the work done in an isobaric process. What is it? For process BC, it will be NR into the temperature difference. The final temperature is Tc, the initial temperature is Tb. So, it will be Tc minus Tb. Substitute the values. N is given to us, it is 6. Into R into Tc is 2200 and Tb is 800 Kelvin. Now, calculate the difference. 2200 minus 800 will give you 1400 Kelvin. So, that will give us 8400 R Joule. Now, let's look at process DA. For DA, which is also an isobaric process, the work done will be WDA equals NR into the temperature difference. The final temperature minus initial temperature. The final temperature is TA, which is 600 Kelvin minus the initial temperature is Td which is 1200 Kelvin and n value is 6. So, it will be 6R into minus 600 R minus 3600R Joule. Now, let's substitute. We get W net to be 8400R minus 3600R Joule. If you substitute the value of universal gas constant R and simplify this, you will get the final answer to be 40,000 Joule. And the correct option for this question is C. Next, we have a question based on the application of first law of thermodynamics. We are given four identical samples of ideal gas taken through paths A, B, C and D from state 1 to state 2 as represented on this graph, which is pressure versus volume. It is also said that Q, W and delta U represent the heat supplied, work done and change in internal energy of the gas respectively and we are supposed to choose the correct options involving them. And the options are here. Well, if you look at the graph carefully, you will see that the thermodynamic state in the beginning and at the end remain the same for each of these processes. Also, first law of thermodynamics says that the net heat supplied to the gas Q 
must be equal to the change in the internal energy delta u and the net work done by the gas put together. So from here we have the net change in the internal energy delta u turning out to be q minus w. And do you see that if the initial and the final thermodynamic states for the gas is the same for all these processes, the initial temperature and the final temperature must be same too. In that case, change in internal energy in each of these processes will be the same. So, change in internal energy for process A, for process B, for process C and for process D will be the same in magnitude. We can say that delta U A must be equal to delta U B and that must be equal to delta U C or delta U D. Now, let's go back to our options. Here are the options. Look at this carefully. Q A minus Q D equals W A minus W D. We know that Q A minus W A which represents the change in the internal energy in process A must be equal to Q D minus W D the change in the internal energy in the process D. If you take W A to the right hand side and Q D to the left hand side, you will get your option A which is correct. Now option B. This represents the change in the internal energy in the process B and this represents the change in the internal energy in the process C and we know that they are same in magnitude. So this option is wrong. Look at option C now. It compares the work done in each process. Well, you are given pressure versus volume graph. The area under the curve in this graph represents the work done in each process and it is certainly greater in magnitude for process A. So, this option is wrong. Now, fourth option, option D. We are comparing the net heat supplied to the gas in each process. Well, delta U remains the same for all the processes. Work done can be different. So, if net heat supplied is different, it is only on the account of work done by the gas. And work done by the gas is highest in the case of process A. So, the net heat supplied to the gas must be the highest in the process A as well. With our deduction, we see that option D is also wrong. So, the correct option for this question happens to be A. Let me help you in interpreting the data of the question. We are given one mole of a diatomic gas sample and it is said that when heat Q is supplied to it, Q by 4 amount is converted into work. We are supposed to find the molar heat capacity of this one mole of diatomic gas with this information. Well, what is the relation connecting the amount of heat supplied and the molar heat capacity? It is delta Q equals N C delta T. C is molar heat capacity. How are we supposed to use it? How is it going to come in handy? Let me help you. We know that from first law of thermodynamics, the net heat supplied delta Q must be equal to the sum of change in internal energy and the work done by the gas. Here, delta U is the internal energy change. It can also be written as NCV delta T. N is the number of moles. CV is the molar specific heat at constant volume and delta T is the temperature change. Now, we know that total amount of heat supplied is Q out of which Q by 4 is the amount of work done. So, the change in the internal energy delta U happens to be 3Q by 4, but it is also equal to NCV delta T. So, I can write that 3Q by 4 must be equal to NCV delta T. 
but CV is R divided by gamma minus 1. So, CV is R by gamma minus 1 and gamma value is given to us. It's a diatomic gas. Gamma value is 7 by 5. Simplify this and you get CV to be 5R by 2. Substitute that here. It will be 5R by 2 into delta T. Alright. Now, let's get an expression for N into delta T from here. Because we had the expression for molar heat capacity to be C and that's equal to delta Q by N delta T. In order to solve for C there, we need an expression for N into delta T which we can get it from here. What do we get? This is 3 Q into 2 divided by 20 R equals N times delta T or N delta T turns out to be 3 Q by 10 R. Now, let's go back to our original expression connecting the amount of heat supplied to the number of moles and the molar specific heat and the change in the temperature. What do we need? C. C is equal to the amount of heat supplied which is Q divided by N into delta T and we know the value of N into delta T now. It is 3 Q by 10 R. If you simplify this, you get the molar specific heat to be 10 R by 3. So the correct option for this question is C.